Hello, I'm Jennifer Witt, Director of ProjectManager.com. Well, welcome to today's whiteboard session on how to deliver a presentation. What I've learned is one of the most frightening things for most project managers is giving a presentation. But that's where we can influence our, our team, influence our stakeholders, our executives, get their buy-in, uh, sell an idea. It's the most powerful thing we can do, but it's the most frightening. But there are a few simple steps that I'm going to cover today on delivering a great presentation. So presentations are like any other thing that we have to do as project managers or any professional. It takes practice. So it's something that um, instead of raising the bar and expecting to walk out on a, on, in front of your audience or your team or any group that you're presenting to, it's about practice, 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 practice. So here are some few things to get you going. There are three components of a presentation. There's actually the presentation, the preparation for the presentation, there is the presentation itself, and there's follow-up after the presentation. So let's break it down. So preparation is what do I do before I give my prep uh, presentation? So there's a lot of things to do. Here are a few categories. One is expectations. What is the expectations for your audience or for whoever's bringing you in? If you are giving a presentation to your executives, your stakeholders, uh, maybe a client, your project team, number one, define your audience, but also talk with them and get clear expectations. I've got an SOW here because in the work that I do, I get a, a statement of work. It's actually a documented, signed off statement of work so that both parties know and agree to and understand the expectations of that presentation. So it's important to understand what is the topic? What are you going to be presenting? Is it um, a status report? Is it a keynote? Is it information to a team? Are you rolling out? a new project? Are you launching a new product line? What is it that is going to be the topic of your presentation? And knowing the audience, who's going to be there? Are you going to be presenting to executives, your stakeholders, your project team? Is it going to be different business units? Or is it going to be internal, external people there? Is it going to be a mix of people who are at different levels, different experiences? What is the location? Where will this presentation be? Is it going to be in your office? Is it in the city? Is it in the country? Is it out of the country? What is the venue? Is it going to be a conference hall? Is it going to be a conference room? Is it going to be an office? Uh, where is, what is the venue for the presentation and time? How long will you have? Will you have a 20 minute presentation? Is this a one hour keynote? Is it 90 minutes? Do you have a half an hour? Um, just you need to know what time, how much time you have. And what takeaways are the clients or the people bringing you in expecting? What are you going to leave behind so that they can follow up, understand, read upon um, after your presentation, after you're gone? The second part is once you have a clear expectation of what you're going to be presenting, it's researching researching through, I love Google. Google is one of my best friends. When I'm researching things, it's so easy to go Google a topic. Uh, I can also go to uh, a library. Uh, I can also interview people. One powerful thing for companies, your project teams, is to interview the people who are going to be in the audience. Interview the people who are bringing you in for the presentation. And the reason you want to do that is you want to find out what are the issues What's bothering them? What are you there to really address? And once you start talking to people, you get different perspectives, different perspectives of how people see the common issue and what you can do to actually address some of those issues. And through that, you want to remain relevant, relevancy to your audience. You want to be talking about things that matter to them. It's timely. Um, if you're in technology, you don't want to be talking about technology that's really old, that's not applicable to them. If you're doing green projects, um, uh, nonprofit projects, construction, engineering, whatever you're doing, you want to stay relevant to what they care about. So you will also want to keep in the back of your mind, why do they care? Why are they bringing you in? And why are they going to listen to you about this topic? And what does this mean to them? 
you know, people are always coming in for presentations. You want to keep them engaged, keep them excited and tuned in to what you're saying during your presentation. So it's important to know, have them be thinking all the time, what does this mean to me and how can I take this back and use it? Professional materials. So whether you're delivering a PowerPoint, you're actually giving uh, handouts or uh, presentation materials in hard copy, you want them to remain professional. If you're going to be presenting something online, it's important to know how to get in, make sure you can have access, make sure that um, you have the logins and passwords and they're still active and valid. And then takeaways, making sure that your takeaways are, are ready, that um, you know where to ship them to and what's actually needed. So that's a lot of preparation before you even begin. And those are only a few of many other things, but just an idea of where to start. Then I feel like there's some best practices before the presentation, before the day of. It's important to visit the venue. Actually go to the place where you're having the meeting. If it's in your office building, just go make sure they have enough seating, the tables are arranged how you like it, the look and feel, if it's a conference area, if it's a stadium, if it's um, on location, off location, visiting that before so you have an idea and you have a feel of what it feels like for you. How are you going to project? How many people are going to be there so you know what equipment you might need? Also rest and relax. Again, this is one of the most frightening things that most project managers do. And even professional speakers always still get those butterflies in their stomachs before they speak. So it's important to get a good night's rest, not worried about your presentation, how things are going because you've done all this preparation, just getting a good night's rest. Uh, also equipment, making sure you have backups. I always have backups. I don't leave myself held hostage to someone else getting equipment, getting materials, um, having control over what I've got to step into because what I've learned is you don't really know if you do that, you don't really know. You may expect them to have a laptop or LCD or materials there and you show up and whoever's supposed to have that done, maybe they're off or they don't really care. So I don't leave that, uh, I don't leave myself open to those pitfalls. And then snacks, uh, depending on how long this is, if you're there for a longer period of time, maybe you're multiple speaking event, maybe you're one of the later speakers, is having snacks, water, things to hydrate and nourish yourself. Uh, then the day of the presentation, again, uh, this is during the presentation. Again, this is a study. So for people who be go into, begin speaking, this is a study. Each one of these are like, you know, there's so many things that you can learn about each one of these. So number one, arrive arrive to the venue, set up and test early. So actually going on site the day of, you get there early, you make sure that the environment's there. I don't know how many times I've shown up and the power's out, equipment didn't show up, critical resources didn't show up. So it's good to get there early. So you make sure everything's okay. These are some of the, there are a lot of areas for failures here. So you wanna keep on top of it. Set up and test your equipment, make sure your laptop works, your PowerPoint presentation works. If you're doing something online, you have internet recep uh, reception. So get there early because that, le that way you have time, you give yourself time if something goes awry to uh, have a backup. Number two, the presentation. Wow, this one right here is a study in itself. When you become, a, if you g go into making presentations, this is an area of study where you can spend a lot of time working with mentors, taking classes to learn this this skill. But in the presentation, there are three parts. There's the intro, there's the message that you're delivering, and the outro. So the intro is coming out strong with either a question or a quote or a statistic, some hook that gets your audience listening to you when you speak. Then there's the message. Having a clear, concise, pointed message that people can follow. If you're rambling all over the place and people can't follow you, they're going to leave confused and frustrated. So you want to have a clear, concise message. And then the outro. How are you going to wrap it up? So you basically tell the audience what you're going to tell them. You tell them through your message. And then you tell them again what you told them in your outro. So you introduce it, you say it, and then you wrap it up. And then through there, through the delivery, is remembering a few items that is like, what is your tone? What are you there to do? 
Are you there to inspire a team? Are you there to inform someone? Are you there to deliver bad news? So it's remembering why you're there and what tone do you need to set? Do you need to be upbeat? Do you need to be serious? Do you need to interject humor? Or do you need to respect the fact that you're going to have to deliver bad news? And then the pace, understanding the pace. So you may have practiced and you may know what you're going to say, so you have it down, but remembering that your audience have never heard this message before. So keeping a pace that people can follow and giving them the pause so they can actually sink in and listen to and hear what you're saying. And then questions, knowing how, when you're going to ask questions. So you need to know going in, are you going to leave yourself room to ask questions? Are you going to take questions during the presentation? Or are you going to take questions after the presentation? And one powerful thing we've learned is you don't want to leave your presentation with a powerful message, setting people up to know exactly what you want, and then leaving some, someone to disrupt your whole presentation by asking some question that's going to throw either the audience off or you off. So you want to leave yourself room, if you do ask questions at the end, to leave yourself time to go back and reset the message that you left your audience with. You also want to have them know what are the next steps. What are the next steps that they are, able, that they are supposed to take? Give them a call to action. Are they, do they need to go complete a survey? Do they need to take a course? Do they need to go complete some deliverables? Um, read a brochure? Do they need to come back for the next class? What is it that you need them to do? And always, always, always give them their con your contact information. How can they reach you for further questions? Can they email you? Can they call you? Do they fill out a form? What do they do to reach you for more information? We found some of the best practices is when, when you're at the presentation and at the end, collect cards from people if they have cards get their card so you have their contact information, make little notes, always get um, someone's card, and if they ask me a question, I write a note on the back. Hey, they asked this question and I need to send some follow-up. Or if they want me to send them a book or some resources, I write the note on the back of their card. Then I write down any questions that people ask that I need to take back and maybe I follow up to one person or I want follow up to the group. And then I also take any other notes that maybe uh, I need to go back and adjust in my presentation, or follow up um, some note to myself of something I need to do. And then there's the follow up. So this is what happens after the presentation. Again, it's more study about this, but here are a few things that I like to do is send a thank you. And depending upon what's appropriate for your audience, again, depending on who they are and what it is uh, that you had the presentation on, I like to send a little thank you. Thank you for attending my session. Thank you for attending this presentation or this course. Uh, here are the things that we, we said. Uh, you asked this question and I found it was um, very interesting. Thank you for participating. Or you can do that through email or a note card. And if you committed to send any other additional takeaways, then send those promptly. Uh, in, address any questions, again, if it's individual or group. Do you um, answer those questions timely and promptly? and send it to either the individual or the group, whoever you committed to. Follow up on next steps. So if you left these people with your audience with next steps, then follow up on the next steps. Maybe after a day or so, or a week, follow up and say, how's it going? I know you were going to read this article or take this course or take this survey. How is it going? I'd like to hear more. And then you schedule the next steps. So after these steps are completed, it's always taking them through next steps. And if there are no other further next steps, then close it out. So close it out formally so everyone knows that it's closed. And then again, always providing your contact information. Again, this is a study. When you're giving presentations, it's on and on. So people who present, it's study. They're always learning. They're always growing. So there are different resources that I like to recommend. Number one, if you have a local Toastmasters. Uh, Toastmasters are groups that give you uh, tips, tools, and techniques on how to, how to give better presentations. There's also the National Speakers Association. Also, some of the other groups, uh, volunteer groups, nonprofit groups you may be involved in, you can practice speaking. You can even go to your organization, maybe your human resources or project teams, and ask for more experience. 
of giving out presentations and then mentors. I have my own mentors who I study with and I'm always practicing on either the business aspect of it, the preparation of the follow-up, or the actual presentation. So again, it's a study. If you need any additional tips, tools, or techniques to deliver your great presentation, then visit us at projectmanager.com.